Hey Glenwood kids, Mrs. Lawson here. It's good to see you again this week. When we met together last time, we visited Mrs. Bufford at Salmon Creek. Do you remember what she asked us to do? That's right. She invited us to go outside and discover the wonder of God's creation. So this week, we are going to do just that. Now, there are lots of different ways we can explore nature, but I thought it would be fun to go on a rainbow walk together. A rainbow walk is when we use the colors of the rainbow to guide us in the different objects we look for, kind of like a scavenger hunt. First, we'll look for something red, then orange, yellow, green, blue, and finally purple. I have my exploring gear all ready to go, my binoculars, my notepad, and my pencil, and I'll record my discoveries here. So I'm going to make my way toward the pond and I will meet you there in just a minute. In the meantime, let's see what some of our Glenwood friends have been discovering at their homes. Hi kids from the two-year-old class. This is Mrs. Bruin. And Miss Bruin. And Mr. Bruin. And we're gonna take you along on a bunny patrol. And what a bunny patrol is, is when we go outside and we look in the yard to see how many bunnies are out running around in the yard. So let's go, but we have a real quiet shh because it's scared. Hey, bunny. Hey there. Wow, that was great. Well, thanks for coming along with us on Bunny Patrol today. We miss y'all, and we look forward to when we can see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, Glenwood kids. My name is Mrs. Ford. I'm going to be playing a game with my granddaughter. She's blind, but she can see some colors if she holds things up close to her eye. So you may see her doing that. She loves playing this game with colored pom-poms. Sis, can you give me one orange pom-pom? Thanks, sis. Can you give me my, a purple pom-pom? Good job, sis! Can you get a white purple pom-pom? You want to get a red and a purple pom-pom? Can you get a white purple pom-pom? Can you give me my, a red pom-pom? Do you see a red pom-pom, sis? There you go! Good job! Okay, let's go see what Mr. Ford is doing. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Ford. This is my nephew. Today we're going to be doing a scavenger hunt and going around the house and looking for all of these items. Let's go! Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Bye. Okay, I'm all ready for my rainbow walk. I'll start right off with red. Let's go. Here's an unexpected red. A month ago, this tree was covered with pink and white blossoms. Now, little apples are growing. Some are already showing hints of red. I see something orange. Look at 
through the bands on this woolly bear caterpillar. One day it will build a cocoon and become a moth. Of yellow. Sure enough, look at that busy bumblebee. The color green is everywhere. I wonder which one I should choose. Look what I found. What a beautiful hanging nest. The mother and father birds have gathered green mosses and lichens and bits of soft tree fluff to create a safe place for their eggs. When the clouds part, I see patches of blue. The month of May is the perfect time to see fields of purple. The lupin is everywhere. It grows especially well here at the wetlands. Wow, what great discoveries. I found each color, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. If you go on a rainbow walk this week, I'd love to see a photo of you with one of your discoveries. You can send it to me at glenwoodkids at glenwoodcc.org. Thank you for joining me at the pond today. Boy, we saw lots of things to be thankful for. Hey, how about if we think of our three thankful things from God's creation? I really enjoyed that hanging nest. The nest reminds me of the way God cares for us. The lupin makes me think of God's beauty. And then finally, the apples. They used to be beautiful blossoms and now they are tiny fruits that will continue to grow. And they remind me of God's faithful work in our lives, growing us day by day to be more like Jesus. What are your thankful things today? Why don't you pause the video, share them with your family, and then we'll hop on over to see Freddie. everyone. You know, I really like living at my pond. The water is nice and calm, and it's so fun to swim in. I don't think I'd like to live in a giant lake where storms can stir up the water and make big waves. That would be scary. Like the time when Jesus and his disciples were out in a fishing boat on a big lake called the Sea of Galilee, and a storm came and stirred up the water. They were really afraid. And do you know what happened? Well, my friend, Mr. Sorensen, is going to tell us all about it. Hi, Glenwood kids. I am Mr. Sorensen. I was a photographer at the Wisdom in the Wild play and the King's Cruise Inn last year at Glenwood Church. I also see many of the fathers and grandfathers regularly at First Things First. My family likes to play Legos. We decided to bring some Legos and blankets here into the dining room and make a little Bible town. This town is called Capernaum. It is on the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee, and it's near where our story takes place today. We're going to read from Mark chapter 4. It's a story about trusting Jesus when you are scared and his power over everything. As we heard last time, people have been gathering from all around, coming to find Jesus. They wanted to hear him teach. They wanted to see who he was. They wanted to be healed. 
These crowds of people soon grew too large to meet in a home. Jesus moved out to the countryside and they followed him. He moved down to the seashore and one day he sat in the boat on the edge of the water and the crowd gathered around onto the beach, close in so they could hear him talk. He spoke all day long, teaching them and speaking in parables. At the end of the day, he was tired. Chapter 4, verse 35, we read, On that day, when evening came, he said to them, Let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Many of these disciples grew up boating on this water. They were good at it. And this storm scared them. They tried everything they knew how to handle it. They changed course. They bailed water out. They fought the wind with their sail. At this point, they woke up Jesus and they cried out to him for help. Continuing in verse 39, we read, And he got up, and he rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid, and they said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I'm not sure what they expected Jesus to do. I, I don't know what I would have expected Jesus to do. They had seen him perform miracles, and yet they were amazed at what happened. He said to them, you of little faith. That is a phrase he used with them when they started to let other things get their attention and overwhelm them. This phrase reminded him, them of who he was and what they had witnessed him do. God listens to our prayers. He knows our fears. In Psalm 29, David writes that the voice of the Lord is majestic and powerful. And here, the disciples witnessed him use his voice to calm the wind. It was overwhelming to them, but he has authority over everything. As you pray and trust in Jesus when you are scared, he is able. He will bless you with his peace. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, you are the king over everything, large and small. We pray that you would be with us when we're scared. Help us to have faith in you. Give us your peace. During this time, please help all of the families of our church to uh, minister to each other, take good care of each other, keep our eyes focused on you. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to live for you each day. In your name I pray, amen. The Bible tells us that Jesus not only gives us peace, he is our peace. When we feel worried or anxious, he's with us. He calms us, just like he calmed the storm. I'd like to introduce you now to our Glenwood friend, Miss Nadler, who plays the harp. She uses her musical gift to bring peace and calm to those around her. Hello, I'm Avonlea, and these are my two harps here, my lever harp and paddle harp. And um, harps were actually used in the Bible in the ancient days. David played a harp. And today, harps are used in hospitals and hospices, and they're used to calm people. And um, they're also used in orchestras, um, featured with other instruments as well. Um, so that's usually the paddle harp that plays, though, because um, Usually you start on your lover harp, and I started when I was about 10, and then you graduate to your pedal harp because it has a much more richer, deeper sound, as I'll show you here. So lover harp sounds like this. And pedal harp sounds like this. You notice those deep bass notes, and then you just clap your hand there, and it stops the sound, <laughs> muffles it. So now I'm going to go back to my lever harp and I'll show you how you change naturals to sharps and flats, which make up a song. So all your sharps and flats are up here. 
and to sharp it, you're just gonna turn this up. So this F is now sharped. And it's color coded, coded blue, so that you know it's an F. And now I'm gonna make it natural. Yeah. Notice the change of sound there. Um, now we're gonna go over to my pedal harp, which as you notice, none has no levers. So it's all on the feet. So I'm gonna change a C. This is a C flat. We're gonna change it to C natural. To a C sharp. Alright. So there you have it. And now I'm gonna play a song for you. Did you recognize that song? Always remember that Jesus loves you. Glenwood Kids, it has been so much fun visiting with you today. Thank you for visiting with me. I'll see you next time.